Hi everyone, Rob here again. Now that you have created your uh, Canvas course and you have uh, set up your basic settings, the next step that you uh, wanted to actually put some content pages in here and then start organizing them and adding some extra features later on. So I'm going to start off by creating a basic page now. I'll eventually end up using this page that I'm going to create as my course homepage and I'll show you how to configure that in a later video. So what I want to do is go to Pages, wait for it to actually get in here. My computer seems a little slow tonight. So I have no pages yet. Do I want to add one? Well, yes, I do. I can click on this little prompt, but that's not always going to be here once you have other pages created. Okay, what I'm going to do is click on the plus sign here, the Add a Page. Uh, this is going to be my course homepage. Now, whenever I am editing content pages, once I get to that stage in building a course, I typically already have a script ready to go of all the text that I want to put in so that I can concentrate on using uh, the features that are built into the learning management system and not worry about what I want to type. If you want to learn more about uh, how I go about that, you probably want to check out my using storyboards uh, in e-learning course development video, which is also going to be saved in this playlist. So I have a script here ready to go for this page. And this is not it. Here we go. Pilot module teaching and learning in an online world. So I'm going to put that in as my course title. Next thing that I'm going to do is to actually add in the text that goes on the page down here. Now I have a bunch of different elements. The next is uh, course graphic. I'll look at that later on when we do a video on working with graphics. So I'll go with my next heading, which is welcome to teaching and learning in an online world. And I have some more text below that. You'll notice I have some notes over here as to what I want to do with each of those bits of text. I'll go back and do that formatting after. I like to do things one step at a time and just paste my text in first. Hit save and then come back and do the formatting. That way I can concentrate on doing one thing and doing it right. Before I start monkeying around with something else. And some more paragraph text. And we'll get all of this into place and then we'll do some formatting on it. And the reason why I'm going through all of this process right now of putting in all of these headings and all these different bits of text for demonstration purposes is because I've actually got a bunch of different uh, types of text formats that I'm going to, uh, to demonstrate on here. And I think that this should be sufficient for our purposes right now. So as I noted, I like to hit save before I go any further. I've got my text in place. I don't want to lose any of it. It's going to show me what it looks like right now on formatted. And the only thing formatted right now is the page title. So I can hit edit to go in and edit this text again. Okay, so now I want to look at my notes here. I had some formatting notes for all of this content. Starting with the first heading, which was going to be uh, welcome to the course. That is heading level two. Now, I never go in and manually format my headings by making them bold and making them larger. The reason why is because that doesn't comply with digital accessibility uh, guidelines such as the AODA guidelines in uh, the province of Ontario in Canada. What you want to do is actually stick to the tools that are built into the toolbar and actually tag this as a heading. So I will pick heading level 2. It doesn't provide you with header 1 because header 1 is the page title. When I tag this as header 2 and then this next one as header 3, what that does is it allows anyone who's using a digital screen reader application 
to use a digital switch or use their keyboards to navigate through the page without having their computer read the entire thing out to them. So it makes it a lot easier for them. Uh, this one is going to be uh, hitting level three down here as well. And this one is also going to be heading level three. I'll leave the rest tagged as paragraph, except for this text down here, which I am going to make a bullet list. Same as using any word processor. I just hit my bullets on here. Now, you notice only one bullet comes up. If that happens to you, just go to the end of each line and uh, hit backspace and then hit enter again and it will add this in here. The problem was that from the uh, script that I had it's not picking up the line break so I need to just go back and add those in. It's only a small tweak. So there we have it. We have a page set up with some basic text on it and I can hit save on here now. But before I do that a couple of other quick items of note. One of these is this little box down here, the options of who can edit. Right now it's set to only teachers. I can also pick teachers and students or anyone. Sometimes I create content pages I want my students to be able to edit, so I have to make sure that I do that. If I don't want them changing the page, I need to leave it as only teacher. The next thing I need to do before anybody in my course can see the pages is actually hit publish. So I can hit save and publish, or I can just hit save here and when I'm viewing the page I can hit this publish icon up here. Now the page is published and visible and that is how you set up a basic content page and work with the text on the page.